How is a girl with problems pregnant? Steve Bossy reacts to this Choice TV vid. It's titled, Krishan Rock is a Liar. How Our Family Holds Us Back. Oop. Okay, I reacted to uh, the video about Krishan accusing her sister of some pretty heinous acts. Uh, but he has an opinion on it. To be fair, I don't watch these people like that, so I, I can't really speak on it. Because people were telling me, oh, D, react to this other video. React to this video that shows Krishan saying this, and there's backstory to this. I don't keep up with these people. <laughs> I don't watch any of the baddies. I don't know what's happening. Um, I was just moved by what she said and also mainly actually what her nephew uh, accused the sister of doing. But I, I have no idea what's happening. Well, let's see what he has to say. That was watch. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my loves. It's Destiny Choice and watching Choice TV. And it's one of those nights. I wanted to get on here and talk about the word of the day. And that's molestation. Mm. Now, I want to talk about this in particular because I usually don't talk about anything about the Zeus Network because it's always some nonsense over there. As we all know, Zeus Network is taking over the world right now. It's a really big platform that exploits a lot of people's issues. And people who are on that platform seriously have genuine psychological issues. But honestly, ain't shit else to watch on TV. So honestly, that's the reason why a lot of us even indulge in it. Since the show recently just wrapped up, the Midwest trailer recently just aired. And Apple TV got some heat, okay? Um, what's that other network? It's a lot of it's a lot of shows out there right now. I have a list of shows that I'm gonna watch uh, when I get on the plane, <laughs> when I start traveling again, okay? Cause mm, it's coming. Um, and that's when I'm gonna watch everything. But I got a list of stuff that that I gotta watch. It's some good shows out there. I need to watch the Aaron Hernandez. Uh, TV series, the Menendez Brothers, um, it's, a, it's a few others, but there's other things to watch. Featured Krishan. Krishan, as we all know, is one of the most disturbing characters to blow up on the internet right now. She blew up because of her relationship with Blue Fade. What are you recording for? Get off the line. Get off the line. You don't control me. Get off the line. attention because of the show baddies now she did nothing but fight make a fool of herself get arrested and go to jail and drink a lot but of course it obviously made her a really really big star so it was beneficial for her career however once she got a little too famous she got very big-headed started making a fool of herself and she got she she got to become oh, yeah, very violent that. and gruesome she and due to her being very violent and gruesome she eventually ended up getting pregnant by blue face and then of course she ended up breaking a bottle over his head then this girl literally punched jonathan right in the fucking mouth jonathan being the guy who's friends with tamar braxton and patty labelle she punched a gospel singer in the mouth due to business disputes and of course she had a warrant for her arrest and she even went to jail and everything so obviously she did her time in jail her son just turned one years old and now she's doing everything she can to turn her life around However, Zeus never managed to cut her a bag and cut her a check, and now she's pretty much on the when platform again, get on the show? herself. And she recently got on the platform with her child in hand to blast the fact that her on sister literally molested her. I remember when I was seven. You said what? I'm done. I'm done talking. I'm done talking. Bitch, you're going to jail. Krishan put her sister on, gave her a platform, and that's the reason why we all know who she is. And now no one really gives a fuck about Krishan anymore. Krishan did drugs, she had a kid, she got she had a drinking problem, a drug problem. Nobody cared about her. Now people are tuning in for her sister, who's beating the fuck out of people and has the easiest job where all she has to do is beat people up, drink, and smoke all day. She doesn't really have much of a personality at all. But Krishan did a lot for her. Krishan got a lot of regret because she didn't like the fact that she put her sister on. And considering she put her sister on and her sister didn't really want to do what she wanted to do. No comment. 
I was laughing at the video. When I was laughing at the video, I really wasn't trying to be like funny for real. But everybody's funny trying to be funny. But I'm gonna apologize for no, 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 I apologize. No, no, but you, you need to apologize. Girl, you don't deal. No, bitch, we're addressing a situation. Fuck us, sorry, Latifa. Hit these bitches. I'm gonna slap you too. Krishan's friends got involved in her family affairs, and then Krishan's friends ended up jumping her sister. As we all know, if you didn't know, and then it turned into a crazy debacle and a crazy fight. And then, of course, Krishan and Tzatziki never spoke or ever communicated ever again. Because imagine you and your little sister getting on an argument on national television. Why is she, she named really after a Greek sauce? By her two I need little to know. minions. That's just disgusting and devastating. And Krishan got a lot of necessary backlash for that. Then Krishan came out and said, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what I did. And yeah, I'm fucked up for that. But what about the fact that my sister used to literally, you know, make us play house and she had me doing all types of inappropriate stuff and touching me. I want to be honest. I don't have a real relationship with my sister because when I realized when I got older. But I want to see how she, she alive. She too. When we was kids, she was a fast individual, bro. She asked her, asked her about what she wanted to play house. Did, but, no, no, because she acting like motherfuckers ain't really trying to touch me. Like, we don't like each other because our childhood, bro. Don't bring, don't be making shit up. It's not even that. Why don't you worry about your son and the people that molest you? Yeah. then automatically made the tables turn and made people kind of realize that Krishan clearly has a lot of unresolved childhood trauma and resentment that she herself has not gotten over. And the reason why she came out and said this was because even though she was getting backlash, she said it was boiling inside her to let it out. And she finally let it out. Now, on top of Krishan coming forth, many of Krishan's siblings and even Krishan's nieces and cousins were coming forth saying that Tzatziki did touch a lot of people in the family. They true for days. If you pick dead, right, and they tell you something to do and you say no, they have beat the shit out of you. Like it's wild, my nigga. And then I ain't, I already told you about the hot sauce and the pepper morning the nigga face every night. I try to go to fuck sleep. They fucked up all my shoes with ketchup, mustard, and all that shit. They poured aside my shit. Oh my and God. All that normal prank shit. And then boom, unless steadily shit start happening. And if I was to say no to them, they'd bang the shot in my mouth, fuck me up so bad to the point they had to hide me every time people came to visit me. Like I remember this one time, right? My grandmother told Tifa as to um, wash the um, bathroom. They been lazy. They know they control me. She could have just smacked me and told me to do it. I would have did it. But they wanted to be extra aware with it. So she'd bring me in the bathroom and whip my joint out and try to grind on that shit. And then try sucking and all that shit. And then tell me to clean the bathroom up. And then I'd tell they did that, bro. And they ignore me, bro. And the next family they come to it. Next family. I was wondering why they was ignoring me about that shit. So people I told in the house. That's because they was on the mother of that shit, too. They do. I don't even want to do this shit for real because at the end of the day, I know how this shit ends. But at the end of the day, y'all niggas ain't give a fuck how I ended. I tried to kill myself five times on that Franklin Street steps. And y'all niggas laughed at me, bro. Most be like little boys sucking his dick. He had been over for you in the doggy position to tell you fuck him in his ass next. That's what he tried to do to me. Latifa, Tashika, she um, suck your dick and fuck you just to clean the shower because she's too bougie to clean anything. I'm like, nah, you feel me? Like, what the fuck? You feel me? You my aunt? No, ew. You feel me? I was cool with the shit. Like, it was supposed to be cool with all the trauma. No. So long story short, she got mad, put a little skirt back down. She had a little skirt on too, by the way. I remember it so vividly. Um, let me see. Um, all right, let's go. All right, Latifa. They didn't put all these things though. Eugene. Fuck your home. Chat. And set. These five motherfuckers I just named. Fuck me up, bro. Then his mother literally came forth. His mother, who's named China, came forth. And said, oh. We watched all this. This is a comic Again, that I want to know then, how she alive. A piece of me generally believes it. And I honestly heard about their child being molested by Tzatziki and other relatives. Then a piece of me generally believes it. And I honestly genuinely low-key believe Krishan. Because what does Krishan have to gain oh, from lying really? about being molested? This brings on a very important subject because this is a common thing that happens. Maybe around. he's just stating what other people are saying because a lot of other people are saying that Krishan is a liar. Cultures where oftentimes people protect predators. People protect predators because most of the times when people protect predators, they'll be like, shh, don't say nothing. It's because they themselves were also molesting people or they themselves saw molestation happen and thought it was okay because, oh, that's just how kids play around. Oh, that's just how that creepy ass uncle plays around. Who cares? But it's really disgusting and inappropriate how we sometimes protect predators in this world. It helps me understand why a lot of people like Harvey Weinstein were protected. People oftentimes wonder why molestation constantly keeps happening, but it's because when you look at people like Harvey Weinstein, when you look at a lot of predators better. in the entertainment industry, it was a lot of people who allowed these monsters to exist. It was always enablers. So that's why when you see these things and you see fucked up things and you actually witness it, you should always encourage somebody to speak up and say something, or you, if you saw something, should report it and say something. Because molestation can have some long, 
long-term psychological effects. Growing up, I never really understood why a lot of the kids in my school were always having sex. Like growing up, I remember there were kids in my class having sex in the stairwell when I was in middle school and high school. Kids were literally hooking up in the stairwell, pressing girls up against the wall or the stairs and fingering them. What Gypsy Bustos is referring to when the school made national headlines because multiple football players had sex with a 15-year-old girl inside the school's bathroom. After that, Gypsy says her parents didn't even want her to go to South Fort Myers High. My dad and my mom showed me everything, like, they didn't want me to come to the school. At the time, parents demanded more supervision. People should be watching over something like that should never happen in a high school. We already had one incident and we don't want it to happen again. That's why Bustos was especially surprised to hear of another sex incident happening at South Fort Myers High School. This one in the stairwell during school hours. Wow, did this really happen? According to this report, two students skipped their classes in December to meet in the stairwell and engage. And that was something that literally happened well. when I was a teenager and when I was in 11, 12, 13 And this, this reminds me, I have just this haunting memory of me having a friend. This is when I was in middle school. She was 13. And I remember her like bragging about how she had anal with her boyfriend who was 21. And at the time, I don't know why it didn't click. I probably was like 12. Cause she was a little older than me so or maybe 11 but i don't know why i mean i figured like oh i was like damn he old she got an old ass boyfriend but it it never i wasn't thinking like oh my god you being abused and this is horrible i need to tell somebody or report this like i didn't have that mindset as a kid obviously but it's just so eerie to think back on that like oh my god yeah she was sleeping with this nigga who was 21 and she was 13. How are you fucking on a 13 year old and like she had pictures and, and everything of them together and so it's not like she was making up this this man this grown ass man and she was like really curvy as well so i just think about the other people who i'm sure preyed on her as well so it's just really sad how these young girls are preyed on years old you know i was witness or be around people who were doing young boys too. back then i just thought it was funny like oh wow that's crazy but a piece of me always knew that it was low-key wrong and fucked up same thing with those young girls that were out here dating 17 year old boys 25 year old boys when they were in high school or middle school i literally grew up with girls who were literally dating 25 year olds when we were 13 and 14 years old I'm not gonna keep talking about my powers. I just, I don't need to keep saying it, but whatever, bro. <laughs> Wasn't even old enough to drive yet, and they were dating 25 year olds, and they didn't realize that they were being groomed. They didn't realize that they were being assaulted. They didn't realize that they normalized something fucked up. But meanwhile, a lot of these girls were being molested at home. So they normalized dating or being around older men, especially older men that preyed on them. Because when they were younger, older men preyed on them in their household. So when older men tried to prey on them and hit on them and flirt with them and get their number, it felt familiar to them. You know what I mean? I so think about her sometimes and like wonder how she turned out. The reason why a lot of girls were hypersexual or hyper promiscuous and giving, you know, top to a lot of the boys in class or giving top to a lot of the girls, you know, in school. Like that was like a lot of things that a lot of us as kids normalized because a lot of us grew up around people that were actually molested or these girls that were going around, you know, trying to hook up with all these other guys and date all these other guys and, you know, try to like do all types of crazy hypersexual things with other girls. They were being touched by adults in their family. And just to like quickly piggyback off of what I just said, the wise woman and author of Confessions mm -hmm. of a Video Vixen, former video vixen and model, Corinne Stephens, one time on our Instagram Live, and she discussed why a lot of these girls out here, a lot of these women, grow up to be real, real fast, really, really young. And she explained that a lot of it is because a lot of these women want to take their power back from when a man defiled them. So like for instance, mm -hmm. you know, being kidnapped and raped at 13 years old, uh, by a grown man at the mall being held for three or four days and then most of you guys who read confessions know the story and then going home finally escaping having to escape my girlfriend and i escaping um hiding under a car you know while our captors look for us like literally it was like taken like the movie like you're under a fucking car you see the feet and you're like trying not to breathe so that they don't find you. I get back to my mother's house and as soon as I hit the door, she grabs me by my hair, she drags me to the floor and she starts kicking me and kicking me 
and punching me and saying, you smell like sex. Yes, I smell like sex. I've been raped for three days by a grown fucking man. I'm 13 years old. Nobody has ever asked me what happened. And all this old shit. And then the next thing you know, you're 20 something years old. And the only way for you to take your power back is sexually because that's the way you lost it. And that's, that's the part true. that no one wants to talk about is that when you see women who are sexually promiscuous, women who are sexually autonomous in such a way that it might be detrimental to their health and well-being and, and their emotional selves, a lot of that is based on sexual abuse and, and, and that we don't discuss. So what I'm going to say to you today is to say before you call well somebody, no, listen, somebody, some people are just whores, right? Like actual whores, like who sell their body. But even those girls, you have to ask them a question. Facts. Even those people, because that's not normal behavior. Like if you grow up... <laughs> With a normal, like, family and have a normal childhood, like, that's not, I feel like, or I don't, obviously, there are always outliers, but I just don't feel like that's a common mindset to have, like, oh, let me just fuck on this person, that person, let me start hoeing, fucking in the bathroom, sucking dick. Like, I, I can't imagine, like, I was grossed out by boys for a very long time, and even when I started to, you know, like boys when I hit puberty, I never had the feeling to sleep with them or like, you know, be promiscuous or feel need to feel accepted by them or, you know, give my body away to all these people. That was just never a thought. So there has to be something. So what she's saying is, is very profound. What happened? Every porn star, every prostitute. Every- I mean, obviously you already kind of assume that. Like, you know, when I think of the girls who do OnlyFans and do porn, like I'm not thinking that they had this great life growing up. I, I am already thinking that something was off with them. But when she speaks about how they want to take their power back because it was taken from them at a young age, like that is an interesting way to look at it every it can be the case you know a lot of people emotionally unstable physically loose girl has a story and you've got to ask these girls what happened and what's really fucked up about the whole molestation conversation and sweeping it under the rug is that oftentimes people even get on the internet now and they're grilling Krishan for even sharing that because they're saying, well, this is family business. You shouldn't be sharing this. No, no, no. I don't oh, agree with weird. that. I think this needs to be shared. I think it needs to be put out on the forefront. Krishan says she's telling the truth. Tzatziki claims that she's going to press charges and she's going to file a lawsuit with a defamation of character because she literally said that on national television where millions of people all over the world are going to see this. And that doesn't make Tzatziki look good because now people are going to be questioning if Tzatziki's even a molester. You know, when I was younger, oh, Tzatziki, I could think so Tzatziki. many guys that I knew growing up who said, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm not going to lie, yeah, like, I was molested or my babysitter did this up. or, you know, my, my sister's best friend did this. A lot of those boys were fucking raped and molested by fucking grown-ass women or teenage girls because they thought that shit was okay. They thought that shit was okay. And then some of them even grew up thinking that it's okay to be hypersexual and to touch women and sexually assault women because when they were young, you know, grown women touched them any kind of way. So they thought, oh, well, it's okay for me to do it because, you know, a lot of grown women did it to me. And, you know, when I was seven years old, I lost my virginity to a girl who was 19. And then you tell them that shit like that is rape and inappropriate. And they say, oh, no, well, you know, you, you know, I would have loved that if I was a kid. I would have loved that. You know, I, I loved it because, you know, I, I'm straight, right? So because you're straight, you think you should enjoy it? Those well, be the ones the time to be heard. I had uh, an ex who was a whore. Turned out to be a whore, okay? Slinging dick left and right, apparently, the whole time we was together. Uh, but lo and behold, you know, come to find out. Not the one I talked about on Patreon. That was a different one. But... <laughs> This one, he had a weird experience occur when when he was younger with an older woman. And, like, he was having sex since he was, like, nine. Just weird shit. And that definitely plays a role in how you navigate the world as an adult, you know? Girl is straight. Should she enjoy it? For and they be thinking, oh, I'm good. And I was I was fine with it. I wanted it. I... Up mentally you just don't know it <laughs> society programs you to think that that shit is normal and you you're going along with it like a sheep but you're mentally fucked up from that that's why you can't control your sexual desires and you slinging dick everywhere at your own detriment and who's actually attractive doesn't to her so 
it's little things like that that we shouldn't normalize. These conversations are so necessary. And I hate that people keep saying things like, well, this should, this, 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 this. Listen, we see shit like this all the time on the Steve Wilco show. We see stuff like that happen all the time and unfold all the time on the Maury show. We've seen stuff like this. But I was laughing. I can't even see your eyes. On multiple trash reality TV shows. I like the It's glasses, important to have these crazy. conversations because, again, it helps us realize our own biases. A lot of us want to say, no, we shouldn't be hearing this. This, this is personal. Fact that, no, we should be hearing this because that same fuck shit where we sit up here and say, well, no, that's family matters. That We should know about this. And yeah, yeah, that's the same mindset is the same reason why a lot of y'all cousins who y'all don't know probably were molested. Your female cousin was probably molested and you don't know it. Your mom was probably sexually assaulted when she was a little girl and she probably would never say a thing because of the shit that we're saying right now where we're like, oh no, this is personal family matters and this, that, and the third. People are scared of being that family that has a predator in their family. So they keep shit to themselves because in their head they see it as, well, we don't want shame on our family. We don't need... No, talk about it. You know, even the shit I've gone through with relatives being conniving and jealous and fucked up and abusive towards me or other relatives or conniving or stealing from each other or being fucked up people. I don't give a fuck to talk about this stuff. This stuff is important to talk about because it helps people realize that they're not alone. And it also helps us realize that we all got fucked up families to some extent, you know, because people are people. So it really is a shame that a lot of people try to make people people. sweep this kind of shit under the rug and ignore it. Because even if there's no proof that Tzatziki did anything to her sister or her cousins or her relatives, everybody can't be lying. I'm kind of side-eyeing her her a little bit because she even went as far as to going on her story, screen recording an old live of her and her sister, and she even said, see, remember one time we went on live and you said nothing ever happened to you as a kid? Uh, See, this is what people were telling me to react to. Let's put this back down to normal speed. I don't think this proves a goddamn thing. And if you think it does, you're a little slow. Why would she want to admit that? This is not something you want to talk about or admit at all. So I can understand how someone who was a victim of that would deny it. And they don't want to speak on it. Maybe she's gotten to a place in life where she like, fuck it. I'm, I'm going to just say it. I'm going to put it out there. This is what you did. You know, but her once saying that nothing ever happened to her, that doesn't prove anything at all. Like, what are we talking Y'all about? Y'all went through some shit. Like, you know? Yeah. Like, nobody never... You know what I'm saying? I never would personally went through something that took my... <clears throat> my love of, like, like, like my child... And the way she's stuttering through that shit, this is not even believable. T- listen, just listen. She don't even sound... And look, she looking up at the ceiling, can't even look straight into the camera. This doesn't even sound believable. Niggas is slow. some shit, like... You know? Yeah. Like, nobody never, you know what I'm saying? I never would personally went through something that took my, <clears throat> my love of, like, like, like my childhood away. The only thing that took my childhood away was, like, mommy over sleep and <laughs> been at friend's house, but that's it. I don't know. <laughs> I put my gun self. Um, <laughs> it's okay. She never said that she- But is she... I don't know if he's about to say that. He probably is. But she didn't say that nothing ever happened to her. She said nothing ever happened that took her childhood away. Very specific language. And I relate to that 100% because I've gone through some shit as well. Okay? I'm not, I'm not going to say it's this. But I've gone through some traumatic shit in my life. I've seen some wild shit. But I honestly don't feel like it's affected me as an adult. Maybe it has. And there's just ways that I don't, I don't see. But I, I usually don't let my trauma control me or consume me or affect how I make decisions, affect how I move with people. So I can say with certainty, you know, from my perspective, <laughs> again, maybe it's affected me in some ways. A psychologist might, might say different, but... From what I'm I'm thinking, I can say that I don't think it's affected me and it affected my childhood. I feel like I had a really good childhood in spite of, of the things that occurred, things that I saw and, and went through. Um, so I, I relate to that that sentiment. And I think she was probably very careful in how she worded that. And she's saying that nothing ever happened to me that affected my childhood, you know? So... And that might be her being delusional. Maybe her childhood was affected. I might be being delusional. <laughs> My childhood may, may have been affected as well. But anyway, so she was very specific. She didn't say that nothing ha- happened to her at all. She never been molested as a kid. She just said, oh, well. It's okay. 
She never said that she never been molested as a kid. She just said, oh, well, you know, nothing ever happened to me that took my childhood. Yeah. You know, play the full context. So a piece of me looking to exactly. see it makes me think to myself, she's really trying to sit up here and discredit to credit Pishon, which I get it if someone's accusing you of being a molester and it's not true. You want to do everything you can to prove to your fans that it's not true. But I just think the best thing to do is to just simply take Pishon on the court if she is lying. But again, it's going to be very difficult for her to try to take this to court and pursue this because she's going to be opening up a can of worms that she may not want to open. Because what happens if a lot of relatives did remember that stuff? You know, a lot of times that they try part. to neglect and ignore that piece of them that did molest, you know, their younger cousins and siblings and relatives. But a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all don't realize that, you know, we can look at Tzatziki like she's all sweet and innocent because she what? can fight and because she's a How sweet, pretty innocent? girl who can rap. But we kind of call a spade a spade. And if she innocent? did some fucked up shit when she was younger, let's address it and talk about it. Granted, she might have been a child, but it's important for us to actually address children doing this to other yeah, children. Thanks. But after this video... Tzatziki is a goofy because just like Rashawn can't necessarily, you know, prove that her sister did that to her... Tzatziki damn show can't prove that she didn't do it. Like, hello. So how you gonna sue her for that? And the issue that she might run into, Krishan might be able to have witnesses, people who said that, oh, well, I did see this and that, or, oh, she did this to me. So it, it's not too far-fetched to believe that she did it to her, her own sister as well. So that's more concrete proof than Tzatziki just being like, I didn't do it. It didn't happen. That's all you got. That's all you got. So, yeah, I, I think this whole situation is just a mess. The fact that Zeus is even airing this is also really raggedy, but what can we expect from that network? I don't, I don't know why anyone is surprised. Y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!